All right, well, we want to talk more about the coronavirus now. The number of coronavirus infections and deaths skyrocketing over the weekend with more than 2,700 people now sick and at least 81 dead. China has expanded its quarantine to affect more than 50 million people. That's more than three times the population of New York, Chicago, and Los Angeles combined. Joining us now is Dr. Amish Adalja. He's infectious disease, bioterrorism, and emergency medicine specialist. A doctor, at this point, do you think this should be considered an international health emergency? I think it's more important to really think about the process when we declare that, because just the fact that people have convened twice, the WHO, and discussed this outbreak at a very high level is really been enough to galvanize the world to respond. So I think that the, the official declaration is less important now, and I do believe that the WHO will meet again to, to re-debate this issue. But there are many factors that, that go into that type of a de decision, and it's hard to know exactly which way it goes. But, you know, for all intents and purposes, this is an emergency. Uh, well, doctor, take us through what we know so far about how the virus spreads from person to person. How contagious is it? And at this point, what portion of people who become infected by the virus ultimately recover uh, versus those who don't? So these are all really important questions that we don't have strong answers to. We know that this virus is transmitting from human to human. We have seen sustained human to human transmission possibly in healthcare clusters and family clusters, but it's really important to know how common that is in the community. And that will really have a big influence on how easy it is to control this outbreak. Mm -hmm. We also don't have a good idea of severity. We know that there are 81 people dead, but we don't really quite know the denominator. We don't know how many people are ill because as we do more case finding, the case numbers go up, but the death numbers don't go up as much, telling you that this may temper a little bit in its, in its severity as we find more cases and there may be more mild cases that have been spreading in the community. So it's really hard to know exactly where this fits mm -hmm. in terms of severity level. And doctor, do we know how quickly science can come up with a vaccine for this virus? Science is moving very rapidly, but you have to remember that vaccines are measured in years, not in days. This is something that takes some time to develop. We don't have a vaccine against any coronaviruses for humans. You need to do animal testing and then safety testing before you can move to efficacy. People are moving quickly. We're trying to accelerate it, but I don't think we should expect a vaccine for this outbreak anytime soon. Uh, well, there are some reports of uh, infected people lying about symptoms in order to travel. How big of a risk does that present and, and what can authorities uh, at airports, at ports of entry do in order to curb the spread? Well, you have to be able to actually evaluate these patients that, that are at risk for infection. So you give them questionnaires, you, you hope that they don't lie, but sometimes when you have draconian measures like what are going on in China with the quarantine, people are just bound to lie because they're afraid of the consequences of, of being found out to be sick, especially when you have this kind of show of force that's going on in, in China. What we need to do is educate people about what to, what's going to happen if they do develop symptoms so they know who to contact so they don't expose other individuals. And what we've seen in the five U.S. cases is that the system is working pretty well here, but obviously in China there are major problems because of that quarantine, and and it may make things much more wor much worse because of the lack of trust that's going on in China right now. Doctor, how does the virus present itself? What are the symptoms that authorities look for? The symptoms are very nonspecific. Remember, coronavirus has caused about one quarter of cases of the common cold. So a lot of the symptoms are the same as the common cold or influenza. So cough, sore throat, fevers, chills, uh, runny nose, those types of things. So it's very hard to distinguish these symptoms from those of influenza. Because remember, we're in the midst of an influenza season right now. Mm -hmm. So what do you think China needs to do, a doctor, and are they taking the right steps so far to contain this outbreak? In the very beginning, China was very open with sharing information about the virus, sharing the genetic sequence of the virus, and, and getting international experts uh, in the know on this virus. However, what we're seeing is now kind of a backslide when it comes to how they're controlling this outbreak. They've really taken draconian measures to isolate a large swath of the population, and that may cause inadvertent problems in terms of distrust in the population, people trying to flee, people lying about symptoms, shortages that are going on with food, medical supplies, medical personnel, hospital beds, all of that can be can, can make an outbreak worse. We would like to see some uh, effort to try and lessen those restrictions, not that people are going to travel, but to, to allow people to have you know some, I, some trust with the government so that they can actually get in and do the epidemiological studies, find all the cases, decide how transmissible this is going, this is, and take the appropriate actions. A big thank you to uh, Dr. Amish Adalja, infectious disease, bioterrorism, and emergency medicine specialist. Thanks for your time this morning. We appreciate it.